as well get underway. We're also joined by the applicant. Welcome, Melissa. Uh, thank you for being here. So um, if uh, I'll, I'll wait for the, the, key, the thumbs up from Meredith and then I'll kick things off. All right, there it is. Uh, thank you. Um, welcome everybody to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. Uh, it is Tuesday, September 7th. My name is Kate McCarthy and I chair the DRB. Um, what I'd like to do by way of introduction of the other members is call people's names and just have them say hello. Um, so, Rob. Hello, I'm uh, Rob Goodwin, member of the DRB. Hey, Rob. Uh, Thanks. Um, Michael. Good evening, Kate. Good evening, Michael. Abby. Hey, Abby here. Hello, Abby. Uh, Joe. Hello, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. And our, our newest member, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Catherine Burgess, it's my first meeting today. Welcome, Catherine. And is Jean here? Yes, hi, hello. Is that Jean? Yeah. Hello, Jean. Hi, where, which way am I looking? <laughs> <laughs> so that camera, sure. that camera, no. that camera no. is to say hi to people. Oh, very good. Oh, this yeah. one. But if you look, oh, that camera? No, it's this one. That one. Okay. Seven. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's good to see you from all angles, Jean. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks. Um, and Kevin. Kevin O'Connor, <laughs> member of DRB. Great. So if I'm counting correctly, we have um, eight members here, including myself. Um, so what we will want to do, I think, um, right now is determine which member will be uh, um, observing and not voting. And I think the, um, the kind of default thing to do would be um, Jean, if you would participate, you're welcome to participate, but perhaps not vote since you're an alternate, um, sure. if that would suit you. So yeah, I really, really appreciate your being here. Okay, great. Um, and by way of introductions, I will say um, very glad to have a new member here and we'll um, have it take a little time at the end of the meeting to just do a, around the around Robin for folks to say a little bit more about themselves, but that, so we can do that later. Um, but that's longer than I usually take. Oh yeah, go ahead. Ask, uh, could Catherine, uh, could you just wait so I can see? You? Oh. Oh, well, thanks very much. Good to see you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for asking for that. <laughs> All right. Great. Um, meeting has been called to order. So before we go any further, I'm going to turn things over to Meredith to review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so um, we don't have any members of the public other than our applicant on, but um, Melissa has not participated in a hearing this way and neither has Catherine. So I'm gonna probably go through the whole spiel, um, especially because we have everybody pretty much on remote except for two members and myself, so. I'm going to share my screen and go into my slideshow. And the slideshow is really more for people watching via ORCA um, who might want to participate. Um, so for those viewing this meeting via ORCA media, if you want to participate, once, you, once the meeting gets started and you hear something interesting that you want to comment on, you can do so by using this link here. Um, and that will take you right into the Zoom meeting platform and let you participate and watch um, anything that we do on share screen, um, all of those opportunities. You can also call in this phone number and using this meeting ID, and then you'll at least be able to hear and speak as to what's going on. Um, if anybody is trying to log in and is having problems, please email me. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, so for those attending via Zoom and doing this for the first time, turning your video on is optional. And actually, if you're having problems with bandwidth, the first thing I suggest is to turn your video off. Um, and that can often help keep, let the meeting run more smoothly. Um, other, another option is to turn off other applications that you may have open. 
Um, I can always share meeting materials on my screen so that you don't even have to have Adobe or anything open on yours if, if that's causing issues. Um, for everyone that's attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, we don't have anybody on uh, via phone today, but if anybody logs on via phone um, uh, uh, using star six, we'll mute and unmute you. Um, the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an actual item on the agenda, please raise your hand, um, either physically if you've got your video on or by using the raise hand button on your Zoom toolbar. Um, and then, uh, you know, wait, wait to speak until the chair has recognized you. Once the chair has recognized someone to participate, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. We don't really need to do that for anybody on right now um, because we know who everybody is right now, but this is if somebody else logs in and is a public participant. Um, all right, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. That's one reason I'm monitoring my email. I'll now hand this back over to the chair. Very good, thank you, Meredith. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda as printed? Second. Motion by Kevin. Second. Second. Um, because we're still in this hybrid format, I am going to, to do the motion. Okay, Kevin. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Um, Kevin. Oh, yes, Mary. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you're, I don't know about anybody else here, you're, you're just, it's stuttering a bit. So I don't know if you want to try and turn off your video or do something else. Sure, I'll turn off my video. Let's try that for a bit. Thanks for letting me know. I can also switch to phone if that's helpful. This, this sounds, this sounds pretty good. Second this, this regarding call the roll. Kevin? Yes. Okay, thank you. Rob? Yes. Michael? I wasn't at the July meeting. We're, we're just approving the agenda now. Oh, the agenda. Okay, I approve that then. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Easy. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes. We've approved the agenda. And that was a good test to see how the sound is working. Can you hear me all right? Okay, thanks. Great. Um, so the next item on the agenda is comments for the chair. Um, and as I did last time, I want to thank you all just in advance for, for your patience with any um, technical hiccups that we may experience. I really appreciate that we have the ability to continue this thing with in-person and remote options. I thank all of you who are there, especially our technical folks, Meredith and Rob from Orca, um, keeping it all streaming. And um, people should continue to use the option that makes sense for them. And we'll continue to all do our best together. So thank you for that. And then I want to welcome Catherine again um, to the DRB as a new member. Um, really grateful that she has stepped forward to serve and work with all of us. And we'll uh, chat a little more at the end and get to know each other a little bit better as best as we can in this environment. So welcome. Um, so move on to item six, which is the minutes. Um, we're going to vote on the minutes of July 6th and of August 16th. So on July 6th, we had myself, Kevin, Rob, Abby, and Jean, who are eligible to vote on the minutes. Um, and we are all present, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of July 6th, 2021? So moved. Just had one uh, suggestion. Motion change. by Jean. Hold on a second. I had a, I had a uh, change. <sighs> Tell you what, Rob, let's get a... Um, Let's get a second and then discuss it. Yeah. Okay, I second it. 
Yeah. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Um, I just want a uh, quick change. It's worth noting um, in, uh, let's see, what is it? Page, second page, um, the second paragraph, um, maybe adding uh, after the last sentence or add on to the last sentence that um, Brooke was not sworn in as a witness. So she attended his counsel, but um, I think it'd be good to clarify somewhere in the minutes that that did not happen. Uh, I, I just raise a, a, a point for discussion there, Rob. And uh, legal uh, representation is not typically sworn in. You get a pass on that. Uh, well, so what I could do is at the end here, Brooke Dingledine was in attendance as counsel for Ms. O'Connor and the Copelands, comma, and therefore was not sworn in as a witness. That would cover it. I think that, that's that's what I was looking for, just for clarity. And it's it's redundant, but yeah, uh, no, I understand where you're going with that. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Thanks all for the discussion. Is that is that, um, is that acceptable to the person who made the motion, Jean? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and vote on those minutes. And if there's no further discussion, okay, I'll call the roll. Kevin. Yes. Rob. Yes. Rob says Abby yes. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay. How about Abby? Yes. Um, and I vote. Uh, I vote yes. And Jean. Yes. Thank you. We've approved the minutes of July sixth, twenty twenty one. Um. And then the meetings of August 16th, 2021, are there any um, modifications or corrections to those minutes from those who were there? Uh, I will make a motion to approve the minutes of August 16th. Seconded. Okay, thank you. Motion by Rob. Second by Joe. Great, we'll call the roll. All those in favor, Rob? Yes. Yes. Michael? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes. Oh, sorry, Joe. Okay. Um, I'm experiencing a bit of delay from my sound. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do is log off of the computer sound and call in on my telephone. Um, so if you all wouldn't mind waiting for, for 30 seconds while I do that, I, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the delay in, in Zoom. You don't scream, but that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, um, how's that? Sounds good so far. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, you're you're coming in very quickly. Right. Oh, good. So that's an improvement. Um, thank yeah. you. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So 
without without further ado or suspense, um, let's move on to our business this evening. Um, we have an application for 11 Ridge Street, um, which is a request for driveway improvements with reduced minimum distance from the adjacent driveway. So um, I'll, I'll welcome Melissa and um, let you and other board members know how we usually go about um, these reviews. So what we do is we swear in anybody who wishes to be heard on the issue, the, the person applying and anyone who wishes to speak. Um, we get an overview of the project from Meredith. We'll hear from, from you, Melissa, of anything that you'd like to add. And then we'll walk through the staff report um, with, or the board may ask questions after you give your initial, initial presentation. Um, with, with this, we're gonna really focus on the driveway spacing question. Um, and then we can go back and answer any board questions about other criteria that we need to assure are met. All right, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try my video again. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right, great. So um, Melissa, what I'd like to do first is, is swear you in as a witness. So if you would please um, raise your right hand, I'll administer the oath. Um, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? All I see right. nodding. You can unmute yourself, okay. Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I thought you would. Thank you. Um, very good. Um, all right. Now we'll move on and receive an overview of the project from Meredith. Meredith, you are on. Thank you. Um, so normally a project that's this small where they're just widening the driveway a lot of times would just be an administrative permit um, but in this instance we have an interesting situation where it's a shared curb cut and was actually at one point a shared driveway there's there's you can see in the photographs that there's um, almost like a railroad tie piece of wood separating the driveways when you get further back from the actual edge of the road um and so really it it's been counted as a shared driveway under the v-trans standards um because for the vermont transportation and therefore the department of public works standards to be separate driveways there has to be at least four feet between them um and so this new proposal will actually separate those driveways with a a planted area in between that at the um, road right of way is going to be over four feet wide. So under our, the other, the Vermont transportation and DPW standards, these are now two separate driveways, but these two separate driveways are closer together than I can improve administratively. So it comes to the, to the board to look at the site specific conditions and decide whether or not you guys are willing to approve this separation distance that's less than the minimum standard um you know and that minimum standard doesn't mean it can't be approved it just means that it needs to go through some extra hurdles the board needs to look at it and normally we get um you know department of public works input on it which we have here and as long as we've got this minimum spacing of over four feet department of public works is okay with this um, but the board still has to go through the criteria um, and make sure that they're happy with it um, under section 3010. And that's what I've got. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Um, so I'll, I'll turn next to Melissa. And if, if there's anything you'd like to add, um, please go right ahead. Uh, no, I think Meredith explained the whole thing. Really, I'm just looking to go from one parking space to two parking spaces. And in order to do that, I, I need to separate from my neighbor. Okay. And the width, the new width of the driveway is what will allow you to go to two spaces instead of one? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. And am I saying your name right? Is it Melissa or Melissa? It's Melissa. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I should have asked that sooner. Um, okay, well, great. Um, board That's members, good. are there any clarifying questions right off right off the bat before we get into the criteria? Yes, from from me, Kevin. 
Um, sure, go ahead, Kevin. The question I have, uh, and this would be for Melissa, uh, does do you have plans to move the uh, this what appears to be the small garage or shed at the end of the drive? No. So that'll stay exactly where it is. It's just the actual uh, uh, drive itself that uh, is involved in this application. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Other um, other clarifying questions? Okay. Um, well, let's let's do this. Let's go right to page six of the staff report. Um, this is section 3010, access and circulation. And this um, section of our zoning bylaw is about promoting safe, safe movement onto a site, within a site for people walking, biking, or driving. Um, and so one of the standards within that is that in this zoning district, Res 3, there needs to be a minimum of 45 feet between residential driveways. And typically we, we look at that across the street, we look at it down the street, and in this case, we're looking at them side by side. So, um, Meredith, it says that um, we are considering this, we're using our discretion as a board and our standard is considering the site and street conditions. Do we grant an exception based on site and street conditions? Are there any other criteria that we need to consider or evaluate? Um, it, it, that's really what you've got. Um, that's the criteria that the board's authorized to do in, you know, with residential driveways. You know, if this were a commercial driveway, there's more standards, but here it's it's a residential driveway, so it's really left to your discretion. Um, and that's why we tend to get as much information we can, including from Department of Public Works, as to what, you know, their criteria are and how they feel about the safety. Okay. All right. So maybe I'll kick it off with one question for Melissa, and then others can ask questions to um, get information that they might need beyond what's in the application. So. Um, could you describe for us, Melissa, how these, uh, I'm interested in the function of the driveways because part of the reason for the standard is a safety function. So you're going from two, if you chan to the driveway, you're going from two driveways like this to two driveways like this and one of them's wider. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. And can you say anything about whether or how this will have an impact on the way that cars come and go from the site and if that how 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 will the driveways function differently or or will they function the same with this change what well, will the impact right. on the neighborhood be if any on the neighborhood I, I don't think there'll be much impact on the neighborhood unless i'm not thinking about something but um i think it's going to have more impact positive impact for us because right now my daughter has to park in the street which it's a narrow if anybody knows Ridge Street I'm at the end of it and it's very very uh narrow so um you know it, it's hard for bigger trucks to get by if there's a car in the street and in the winter time when there's a parking ban um it's almost impossible to park in the street because there's snow cover and the the distance between the um, snow banks, a parked car only leaves a very small strip. So even the mail carrier can't get by. Um, so, you know, the, the winter parking is really where it's going to benefit us right now. She can park out in the street, but uh, in the winter, it wouldn't be safe. Okay. Thanks. Um, so it sounds like this will improve the flow of traffic in the neighborhood um, by virtue of having the car off the street. Okay. All right. Um, what, what questions do folks have about this? I'm curious, I don't, I don't know who this is a question for, but I'm curious as to why the Department of Public Works said that they would, they're okay with it as long as there's a four foot, at least a four foot 
distance between the two. What's kind of magical about four feet? Um, that is a Vermont transportation standard that is in flows down into the Department of Public Works street standards. Um, for for the VTrans, the state standard to have them be counted as two separate driveways, they have to be at least four feet apart. And then building on that, the maximum width allowed for a residential driveway under the VTrans standard is 24 feet. So for for the new the, the moved driveway to be able to be 24 <coughs> feet wide, it has to be at least four feet separated from the adjacent driveway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So Meredith, are you saying it can't be 24 feet wide unless it's also four feet apart? I mean, just from a, on the ground, leaving aside the VTrans standard, is is that four foot separation also necessary to align the new width where it needs to be, or is the four foot purely a, a VTrans and V71 standard? Uh, the okay. the well, <laughs> um, so the four foot the four foot separation. I don't, I don't have it. It's not purely VTrans because DP for, for, for Melissa to get the construction and access permit she needs from Department of Public Works to widen her driveway to 24 feet, it has to be moved at least four feet from the adjacent driveway. It has to be its own driveway to be able okay. to be a 24 foot width. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm talking in circles. I'm sorry. No, you're doing you're doing all right. I'm thinking in circles. Um, so this is this is because the, the town has adopted the VTrans standard. So it's not VTrans is it, we're not implicating VTrans. Sorry, 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 Joe. Um, and um, it's that the 24 foot wide driveway will only be approved if it also upholds the other standard as adopted by the town. Right. And and those those okay. numbers are not in the zoning regulations at all, except that. <laughs> Section 3010 incorporates the DPW and the VTrans standards. Like it has to meet those as part of 3010. Okay. I, I think where I'm going with this is perhaps more a policy question than an interpretation of our bylaws. And, you know, forgive me for that. But it, it seems like what we're doing by requiring that four foot strip is creating a little more work for the applicant and creating a much wider curb cut than there would otherwise be. And usually we don't want wide curb cuts. Um, that's, but that's, here we are. That's true, um, and okay. but it's it's a um, it also will create a pervious area in between those two driveways for things like snow melt and other other runoff issues, um, while also still allowing Melissa to have that increased parking area that can be has room for you know snow storage and snow movement. You know, okay. I, I can I can only speculate, but uh, the 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 purpose of the four foot uh, uh, dimension is is also uh, to have a viable separate a viable uh, uh, planting area. I mean, more, less than four feet, kind of you kind of defeat the purpose. It's going to be tough to keep anything viable uh, in in uh, a high saline environment. Uh, this uh, the four feet just gives us a standard which has already been worked out by uh, VTrans and DPW. Okay, yeah. So for future screening opportunities, if if, if someone wants to do that, um, thank you. And I should say, my my questions are like curiosity about the the policy on the ground more than concern about the application itself. So um, thank you for bearing with me. Um, what what else would um, are there other questions from DRB members that would help them consider consider this request? So if you think of something, pipe up. But in the meantime, I will say that. Um, it, it is our job to determine whether or not to grant an exception to the minimum spacing standard. Um, the staff recommendation is that we do grant that requested exemption, given that 
It complies with the standards we've discussed. It's substantially similar to what is there now and meeting those standards is not possible on the site. Um, and as we just described, it's still going to be a continuous curb cut. There's just going to be a little more space between the parking spaces. So that, that is a staff recommendation. Um, does anyone want to, any concerns about that recommendation or questions about this section of the, of the zoning? Rob, I saw you're unmuted. I want to make sure we get you if you have a question. Um, no questions about that specifically. I just, it's my understanding that there's no connection between the work on the retaining wall at the end of the driveway um, and this uh, curb cut and that those are completely separate projects. Um, it's not, it's not a separately permitted project. It's part of this permit. It's just that it's been evaluated already and I would have just approved it administratively. So that's, it's in here okay. in the dimensional. I, I folded that special standards into the, um, 3002 and 3003 analysis versus having a whole separate special use standards because it's a wall. So really the only thing that comes into play is the height. Um, and and it meets those requirements and there's no changing of slopes so we don't have to worry about that and it's a very very low wall um so that will be approved here as well so i guess you know our the the motion to grant approval at the end could probably be modified to about the 24 foot wide driveway and the max two foot retaining wall could be thrown in there i guess in the motion that was maybe an oversight on my part Is, is there more information that folks are interested in having about the wall in order to be assured that the dimensional standards are met? Is there anything you want to talk about, Rob, or anyone else? Oh, we're good. Okay. Um, what I'd like to just do then is open it up to board members. Are there, are there other sections here um, where we're going mostly with the general standards, um, uses, dimensional standards, demolition, riparian areas, wetlands, vernal pools, steep slopes, erosion control, stormwater management. Are there, are there any, any questions or uh, information that you'd like to have about any of these criteria? And you can just start speaking if, if you have something to say because my um, video is still I would say, Kate, that I'm satisfied with the information as presented. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, with that comment and hearing no other questions, um, is there a motion to approve the request for a driveway width? less than minimum spacing and the retaining wall. Is there a motion? I'll make the, I'll make the motion. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Second. Second from Joe. Motion from Kevin, second from Joe. Is there any further discussion? All right, I will call the roll. Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Michael? Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you all for your questions and, and discussion. Um, at this point, um, the, uh, Meredith will issue a written decision within 45 days, um, after which there is an appeal period for 30 days. If you have questions about what that means for making decisions about your project, I recommend chatting with Meredith um, after the meeting. Um, but that concludes our review of the, of the application. Uh, really appreciate your participation, Melissa, and uh, good luck with your project. All right. Thanks, you everybody. I appreciate it. You're very yeah, welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have a good night. All right.
Well, great, everybody. Thank you. Um, we have a light, we've had a light agenda today, so um, what I'd like to do now is move on to item eight, other business. The first item there is that our next meeting is September 20th, um, 2021. Um, another piece of other business that I think you're aware of, but I should say publicly, is that this is my near to last meeting um, as chair and on the DRB. That's hard to say out loud, um, but that's, that's what we're doing uh, for now. And I appreciate you all being so supportive. Of, of that decision. I really like this board and know that it will carry on just fine. Um, so what I'd like to do is just take, you know, 10 or 12 minutes, if, if you all wouldn't mind, um, really happy to, get to welcome Catherine and just thought it would be really nice if, if we could take this time to each take a minute or so, and say hello, say who we are. Um, you can say one or two things about yourself. Um, those can be personal or professional or your favorite ice cream, whatever you like whatever you want to share. Um, and if you, if you really feel like making it, turning it into a fun icebreaker, you can say what you love about the DRB or you know, something that you've enjoyed learning or, or find interesting about, about this. Or you can completely skip that question because some people hate icebreakers and that's okay. Kate, Kate could I just uh, yes. ask for just sort of a general foundational question with regards to this discussion? Should, sure. we, be, should we be in open session or in deliberative session? I throw that out for the board's consideration. I hadn't thought about it one way or another. Um, Meredith, do you want to advise on that? I mean, if all we're doing is introducing ourselves, I think that can yeah. be open. That's open meeting. That's fine. Um, you know, that's that's the the public. If there's any public actually watching this on Orca, who knows? It, it might, might entertain them as well. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might be a little more entertaining. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of opening what. Of uh, what level of detail we, yeah. we get into. I mean, discussing uh, chair uh, succession and that kind of thing, that should definitely be done in right. the middle of yeah. What if, what if right. we want and, Orca and, Rob and, to have the chance to get off early? Well, or for Orca to have a chance to get off early. <laughs> right. right. We, um, we won't be discussing discussing any um, board personnel. This is, okay. this is just a, a very casual chance to do introductions. Okay. And I case, invite people. Case, I, I, I'm totally supportive of the direction we're going in. Okay, great. And people, um, I, I, I won't belabor it any further. We'll, we'll just get started. Um, I, I'd be glad to go first and then I'll hand it over to Catherine um, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, um, you know, my name, my name is Kate McCarthy. I've served on the board since about 2012 when I started as an alternate. Um, I later became a regular member and the vice chair and then the chair. Um, I'm a land use planner by training and I've done that work in a variety of ways in Vermont uh, related to the environment and communities. Um, I live in a small house in town where I can walk around and that's one of the things I really enjoy about being in this place. Um, I've been very glad to serve on this board and get to meet a lot of people who are doing really interesting things with with their property and in their neighborhoods. So something I really appreciate having a window into. That's me. Um, so Catherine, if, you, if you'd like. Great to meet everyone and looking forward, I hope to meeting folks in person at some point. I'm Catherine Burgess and this is, as you know, my first meeting with the DRB. I'm a land use planner by background, but I've worked in national policy for the past like 10, 15 years. So I'm really excited to serve on the DRB to both get to know Montpelier better. I just moved in the past year and to you know do service for the community and also to um, you know get to get nitty gritty with zoning here because right now in a national job, I'm often kind of at the 30,000 foot view. So I work uh, for Smart Growth America remotely, their DC based advocacy organization. And I previously worked um, in urban resilience, at the Urban Land Institute. So, you know, always looking at kind of national land use policy trends. So something I hope I can bring to the board is knowledge of like best practices and trends in other regions nationally. And um, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me professionally and personally, you know, being new to Montpelier, I've just, yeah, loved getting to know the community and I've got two kids and live near the rec center. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin, if that's all right with you. Oh, sure. Uh, so I'm Kevin O'Connell, uh, Catherine, and um, 
I've been uh, a member of the board for for a few years, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thoroughly enjoy my involvement uh, uh, as a way of uh, kind of paying back the community, which I which I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy here in uh, in uh, Montpelier. Um, I am recently retired from state service. Uh, most re recent uh, position, I was a contracting grants manager for the health department, and I retired right before the sky fell with the COVID, which was really kind of interesting. I don't know if I was glad of it or not about that. Uh, I spent most of my time in state service, though, as a as a uh, budget and management analyst in the uh, governor's office, and. Um, uh, my, if I go back uh, quite a few more years, uh, uh, my graduate education was in landscape architecture and urban studies. And uh, I sort of took a turn about 30 years ago, which led me away from that and more into administrative financial uh, types of things. But yeah, I live here in Montpelier, lived here, you know, most of my life and uh, uh, have no plans to do to, to move anywhere else. I had plans to do a lot of traveling, however, and uh, that <laughs> sort of sums it up. Uh, I, I mean, I'm really hoping that uh, we can get clear of this, uh, this persistent virus, which is, which is playing havoc with our, uh, uh, with our lives. <laughs> so anyway, good to meet you. Thanks, Kevin. You're here. Um, Rob, would you mind going next? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Rob Goodwin. Uh, I've lived in Montpelier for, oh, five, four or five years now, I think. Um, I don't know, the pandemic counts as like five years, so 10 years, like I don't, I don't know like what the, <laughs> what the formula is, but um, I, um, I'm a uh, background in land surveying. I work as a um, uh, survey project manager at an engineering firm. Uh, the office is actually in Montpelier now. Um, called VHB, um, and most of our work um, is supporting engineering and transportation uh, projects and utility work around the state. Um, previously, I worked for four or five years doing primarily residential survey work, small subdivisions, and um, you know site plan type uh, type work. And um, I uh, yeah, I grew up in the Adirondacks in upstate New York. Uh, and uh, if you see someone really muddy out biking on gravel roads, it could be me, but also could be a bunch of other great people in this town like to do that too. So that's that's what I like to do for fun. Cool. Thanks, Rob. Um, Michael, would you mind going next? Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Wozorczak. I work for the Town of Stowe Electric Department. Actually worked with uh, one of Rob's colleagues today, Britta, on a mill renovation project I have going on in Stowe. Uh, moved back to Vermont, I think it was in 2018. Like Rob said, time has both slowed down and sped up with the pandemic. And I think the DRB is, is fun because of uh, all the quirky neighbors you get to meet and all the things that they like to argue about. So I think for me, it's, it's fun. I've been in a lot of Western towns and it's a good opportunity being in the, in the Northeast because you can actually be a part of a uh, small town government. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Michael. Um, Abby, can I turn to you? Sure. So hi, Abby White. I'm Montpelier resident and I've lived here for, uh, I don't, eight years, maybe nine years. I can't really remember. I have to go back to like my children, how old they are. Um, I think eight years. And uh, I have two kids in the schools. I have a um, eighth grader and a fifth grader. And um, for professionally, I'm the vice president for um, strategic communication at the Vermont Land Trust. So my professional background has been in marketing, communications. Um, previously, I was with Efficiency Vermont and I worked in the energy sector. I really worked in the energy sector, clean energy sector for most of my career uh, in marketing communications roles. Um, 
Gosh, what do I love about the DRB? I mean, it's like you never know what you're going to get, you know? <laughs> every, every meeting is different. Um, every, every case that we review is different. And um, I, I really appreciated just the opportunity to learn and to be involved at the, at the city um, in a way that's kind of like pretty nitty gritty, but very impactful, to, you know, quality of life here. Great. Thanks, Abby. Uh, Joe, would you go next? Sure. Uh, my name is Joe Kiernan. Uh, I've lived here in Montpelier with my wife for about eight years now. We moved up. Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts, went to school in Pennsylvania, and I followed her up here when she got a job up here. She actually now works for the same company Rob works for, VHB. Uh, previously, it was the Johnson Company, but they got bought. Um, I work as a civil engineer for VTrans and the Roadway Design Group, so I design roads all day. Uh, previously, I worked as an environmental consultant for a little while and uh, also as a contractor doing utility installation and road work. A um, little bit about me, it's hard to think about anything else right now. Today, my wife is 39 weeks pregnant, so uh, things are happening quickly probably but not as quick as she would like um, <laughs> so it's a good chance by the next meeting uh the family will be three instead of two wow congratulations thanks keep us posted if you like um great uh jean Hi, Catherine. It's nice to meet you and welcome to the DRB. I've been in Vermont over 20 years, in Montpelier about, everyone forgets, about five, six years. Uh, yeah, and this is, uh, this is right here, the DRB's Bible. So <laughs> I have a copy for you. I brought it. The best tool. Um, I'm an independent contractor in town, and I manage a few properties in town. I'm also an upcycled, repurposed artist um, involved with Central Vermont Recycling, and I'm a local business owner. So, yeah, this is uh, being involved with the DRB is, is a great opportunity to meet many in our community and assist and learn and be a part of the applicants uh, challenges and and agendas so welcome thank you Jean. and last but certainly certainly not least meredith thanks kate hi Catherine. um so i will try to keep this relatively short uh, i grew up in the area um i lived in Montpelier for a short stint when I was in high school and then again after undergrad. Um, and then my most recent real background is that I, I went to Vermont Law School, actually got my JD there and a Master of Studies in Environmental Law, thinking I would go into environmental law. Um, and then, of course, I was a baby lawyer competing with all the experienced lawyers moving up from out of state. <laughs> um, and so I ended up actually doing corporate law for about six years. Um, mostly corporate. And uh, and after I had kids, I needed a change of pace. Um, and so after taking some time off and reassessing, I lucked into this awesome zoning administrator job. Um, and now I get to work one-on-one -on -one with people or small businesses, as well as the larger developers and help people understand the regulations, um, help you all understand the regulations as well as work out kinks in them to then go back and try and fix the regulations if there's stuff that doesn't work. Um, and I get to learn new things every day. Um, it's great. I get to learn things from all the DRB members as well as applicants and you know my, my team down at the planning department. Um, and so it's, you know, there, there are days that get a little repetitive, but then you learn something new just about every day. There's just like Abby was saying, um, you really never know what application is going to come in the door. You know, am I, am I going to be helping 
someone's dad figure out how to put a porch on their house or am I going to be helping a developer figure out how to put in a new 80 unit you know apartment complex um or are we going to try and figure out how someone can put steps in down to the river um and not violate our riparian buffer so it's it, it's pretty cool it's pretty fun and I really enjoy the the back and forth that goes on here um, at the board. And as, as Kate likes to say, um, you know, we really try and make it a conversation um, a lot of the time with a lot of these applications. And I think that's great. It's been a really fun board to work with the last three years. I, I, I just want to do a shout out for, for Meredith here. We've had, we've had some really good zoning administrators, but no, none of them have been as good as Meredith. <laughs> She's the most knowledgeable and and, and the happy to help uh, administrator that I've ever experienced, and really well, appreciate that. Thank you, Kevin. Good that means you. a lot considering how long you've been on the board. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you all for taking the time to do that. Um, particularly since we have not we have not convened in person as this board um, because, as we all know, why. Um, so I appreciate taking just uh, 15 minutes at the end of the meeting um, to reconnect a little bit. Um, Catherine, really happy to have, have you on the board and use that as an excuse for us to just chat a little bit. Thank you. Um, thank you all for doing that. So um, if there's no other business, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Jean. Second. I think that was second by Rob. And Kevin, okay. okay. Um, I'll call the roll. That's what we do. Um, Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Michael? Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, everybody, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much for your time and uh, have a good couple weeks uh, till we see you on the 20th. Yes, you will.